What's going on, everybody? What's up, folks? We are back. Episode 103 of the Dark Windows Podcast. Epi- oh, man. Started, it feels weird to sound, say, uh, in the 100s. I think technically this is season, this is uh, episode 3 of season 2. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because we're going to do fucking 100 episode seasons. So buckle in. It's going to be a long oh, ride. Damn. It's going to be like Dragon Ball Z up in this bitch. <laughs> Last time on Dragon Ball Dude, Z. Do you know how many fucking episodes they had per season of that? It was insane. Quite a well. Because like, not, not, Dragon not Ball much. Z was technically one season, and then like Dragon Ball GT was technically a season. So, yeah, they got a shitload. It was like so. It was like years. Because I know I know GT has got like six or eight discs. Because I've got the box set downstairs. Because I bought it because I wanted to watch Dragon Ball and they didn't have Dragon Ball Z at Walmart and I was sad. Yeah, but it was only twenty five bucks. It's not bad. It's not my favorite Dragon Ball, but... I mean, there's Dragon... Uh, there's a new one. I can't think of it now. I don't know. It's got a fucking purple cat in it. Yeah, well, purple cat actually was in uh, the... I don't know. There's after... It was like a little run after GT. Okay, anyway. Anyway. Favorite Dragon Ball Z villain. Go. Ooh. Um... Uh... Mm, uh hmm... Vegeta when he was bad. Yep. Okay, he's top two then. I mean, it's either him. Well, I also did like, uh, um, Cell. Cell. I, mean, I like Boo. Majin Boo. Yep. Baby Boo. Just Boo in general. Well, because there big was, lop of fucking bubble gum idiot. Well, because there was Majin Boo, then there was Maj, uh Boo. It was the same same thing still. He just changed. Yeah, but there was Baby Boo. Yeah, but he was still the same thing. But then he became Skinny Boo. Yeah. Then just boo boo. Then he became fucking prison boo, where he's all jacked and fu- jacked and shit. It's true. And then um, Cell kicked his ass. I didn't like Frieza. Frieza was a little too, I don't know for me. Uh, Wasn't Frie- a big fan. I don't know. I kind of like. I don't mind Frieza, not too much. I mean, he's. Mm. I liked Raditz too. He was pretty cool. I I will definitely take Frieza over Raditz. Yeah, I mean, he was more like a secondary villain, but whatever. And Mr. Satan, technically, if he's a villain. No, he's But not. I don't know. He's no. kind of an asshole, though. He's he's definitely not a villain. So he's, he, you can still be an asshole and not be a villain. He's just... Um, he's an asshole. A wannabe. Yeah, but he was still an asshole. I guess. Sure. Okay. Anyway. Well, well hey. You know what? Speaking of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually. Speaking of non-assholes. Well, hold on here. Speaking of assholes, what are we talking about this week? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, well, this week we are discussing something different than usual, I guess, because we don't normally cover... This will be our second something, time. Yeah, something so... Uh, we haven't done it in a fucking minute. Uh, so, like, just to the point, you know, just one specific thing. Yeah. Not like It doesn't, like, fall into a category. I mean, it sort of does, because it covers, like, sort of true crime. Oh, well, lots of true crime. Yeah. So, but this week we're covering... ADX Florence. Supermax. Which is a Supermax. The Alcatraz of the Rockies. Yes. But anyway, before we get to that... Let's talk about... Uh, the, I want to talk about the Alcatraz of headphones. We, yeah. They lock shit up. The, the Sweden version. <laughs> Swedish Alcatraz headphones. Yes. Go over to studio.com and check out their headphones, earbuds, and Bluetooth speaker. That Bluetooth speaker's awesome. Find what, find what you want. Put it in your basket. Go to checkout. Go down to coupon, put the promo code of Dark Windows fifteen in, get fifteen percent off your entire purchase. Yeah, which is pretty good savings. It's a good savings, yeah. and you get uh, the sh- the shipping is usually very fast too. Uh, yeah. the, the order usually ships within like one to two days of you placing it, and you usually end up having it within about a week to ten days of something close to that because it's coming from right. Europe. But also depending on the pandemic and shit, who knows? Yeah. But I would imagine it's still pretty quick because the Swedes are, mm-hmm. you know. Headphone Vikings. So, True. Anyway. So. Anyways. Why don't you start us off? On with the show. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, this week we are discovering. Discovering. Ooh. No. Well. Like has it been there the whole time and nobody knew about it? Just full of assholes or something? I have discovered. How about that? Because I never knew anything about oh, this place. Oh, shit, dude. Yeah, this is. 
This place is like until you said <laughs> until you basically said it's like the Arkham or whatever. It's like real life fucking Arkham yes. or the Raft from Spider Man because this bitch is full of supervillains. And then I looked into who, who was actually there, and I was like, oh. And that's what we're gonna cover after we come back from our break in the second half of the I'm show. Going, I'm so. going, <laughs> huh? I'm still looking, going, okay. So is the Croc in there? Is the Penguin? No, I didn't find any. The Vulture's definitely not in there. Well, he could be. Because he's kind of, a, kind of a pansy anyway. Yeah, true. So, we're talking about the U.S. penitentiary called Supermax, called ADX Florence. Also known, as Kevin said earlier, the Alcatraz of the Rockies. Yep. It is a modern, super maximum security federal prison. It was built in 1994 in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains near Florence, Colorado. So, this place is still a baby when it comes to, like, prisons. Yes. Okay, cool. The all-male prison population of ADX Supermax includes inmates who experience chronic disciplinary problems while at other prisons, those who have killed other prisoners and prison guards, or gang members, uh, high-profile criminals, Mm -hmm. and organized crime crime mobbers. Yes, sir. We have got a bunch of those. Uh Yeah, I was was like, whoa. Holy Jesus, there's a lot of bad guys in here. And this is not the kind of place you go for, like, selling a little bit of weed or, no. you know, stealing no. a car. This is the kind of place you go when you're a very, no. very, very bad boy. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of those guys. But. Now, in addition to all of those idiots, this how this prison also houses criminals who could pose a threat to the national security, including <laughs> al-Qaeda and U.S. terrorists and yep. spies. And I'm pretty sure you're probably going to talk about. I got a, I got a, a couple of those. I got too. about five total of those. Yeah. So according to one source that uh, that I read, they said that it is such a harsh prison that it earned its way into the Guinness Book of World Records for being one of the most secure prisons in the world. Nice. The prison has advanced security systems inside and outside of this of the buildings. The the structures are monolithic structures. Uh, they are surrounded by twelve massive towers, security cameras, attack dogs, some laser technology. Oh shit! Is it like disassemblement, like laser grids, like Resident Evil, like the movie style? Fucking maybe. God damn, that'd be cool. I don't know. You're out in the yard too long, and they just turn the fucking lasers on, and they just cut into like ice cubes but of meat yeah meat cubes nice well they have uh, remote control door systems and pressure pads that exist inside a 12 foot razor high fence that surrounds the prison grounds outside visitors to adx prison uh max supermax florence are for the most part unwelcome they don't right yeah you don't and honestly do you really want to visit anybody there I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, I don't know. So, when inmates arrive, they are placed in into one of six housing units based upon their criminal history. The facility has nine ha- housing units that are divided into six levels. Now, that confused me because I'm like, well, there's one of six units. I'm wondering if they were... Uh, because I tried to fi- figure out what the hell that actually meant. So it's like different find... cell blocks, I'm guessing. Yeah, I tried to figure out, okay, tried to find another source that actually went into that more. But everything kept saying the same exact thing. So I don't know if it's some kind of big secret. Like, you know, because like, I mean, it's one a of six housing prison. units. So is it, so does that mean that, okay, well, all right. So one of the nine housing units and one of the nine buildings and then there's one of the six floors has to be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that would make sense. So that's they're calling the housing units. Is like each floor is a right. housing unit. That would make sense. Now, the levels go from least restrictive to most restrictive and secure. Um, operations, privileges, and procedures vary from unit to unit. Yep. I, I, which, I get that. Which makes sense. Right. Uh, so here are some of the units. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to put some like green-ass rookie guard up with like super super violent criminals that are just gonna like if they get loose they're gonna fuck them up you know yeah no okay so here's some of the units does the control unit 
the special housing unit or the SHU, mm-hmm. which uh, inmates are separated. Usually, what it is is that it's a place where inmates are separated from the regular prison population, and they're either put into groups or alone. Right, kind of like now, protective custody, kind of. Now, for the most part, which is kind of odd to me, is why they would have something like the SHU, considering most of these inmates are actually alone themselves anyway. Well, there's some people that so need... So, unless there is... Unless on these floors, because they don't really go into it, because it, uh, I'll, I'll get into, like, you know, how they go about, like, you know, what their cells are like and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But from what I had looked into uh, get looked into it, they said that most of them, well, all of them are pretty much, like, they're all alone. Right. In their, in their cells. But there's some people that need to be even more alone than others. Well, there's no more alone than... Hey, you're in your own prison, your own cell, and that's it. You, there's nobody else that lives with you. Right, no, but... I mean, unless un, unless they mean that there's, like, you know, one wing that's just you, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And versus, oh, hey, kind of like there's solitary. a whole pod. Yeah. You know, there's several different people in that pod, yeah. Y'all can't see out, but... You're all in the same pod. Yeah. So that's that's what probably what it could be for this instance. Anyway, enough of that. The, another unit is called Range 13, which is an ultra secure and isolated four cell wing of the shoe. Okay. Okay. So this is where our like. So this is like, okay. So you've been bad, you know, in the normal way. You're causing some shit in the fucking. Okay. So then you were causing shit in the shoe. Yeah. Or well, you're causing shit like. At you dinner get... or whatever, which, I mean, these guys don't eat dinner together. Pretty sure they just kind of stay right in their box where they belong. Yeah, well, so then there's another unit called Special Security Unit, or Unit H. That's for terrorists. Mm. Uh, then there's the general population units, which are Delta, Echo, Fox, and Golf. Um, there's an intermediate unit slash transitional unit, which are Joker uh, unit, Joker unit, and Kilo unit, uh, which houses prisoners I- entered into the step down program, which they ca- uh, can earn their way out of ADX. Oh, be transferred to a, a lower security. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah, for I, I don't know how much I like the idea of naming one of these units after someone who was in a fucking, like, fictional supermax prison all the goddamn time. Yeah. Maybe not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, Arkham wasn't only a prison, but it was actually for, like, this... Actually, it wasn't really a prison. It was an asylum. It was an asylum. But, I mean... You know, fucking sort of prison, but it was, like, a, a supermax well, prison asylum. Let's throw motherfuckers in the kingpin unit, then. Or the fucking scorpion unit. Okay, now you're just or other over. assorted Spider-Man villain units. Okay, all right. You know, but they went to Rikers. They went to the raft, which was off of Rikers. Oh, uh, okay. That was like their like super villain jail. Okay. Which I'm pretty sure this is based off of because this is a super villain jail. Yeah. <laughs> so for an inmate to be moved to a less restrictive unit, they have to maintain certain conduct for a specific amount of time participate in recommended programs and demonstrate positive institutional adjustment. Okay, so you got to not be a shit for a little bit. Yeah. You know, just basically just do your what you're fucking told. Right. Because, I mean, there, there's definitely some guys in there that could be potentially moved to a different, like, lower security mm-hmm. prison if they can keep their, you know, that keep their noses clean or whatever. Because, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of really bad guys in here, but there's some guys that are less bad than others in here as well. Yes, definitely. And I'm... I'm pushing towards those guys that are like heads of mobs or were some of the most of them i believe should probably stay there just in case yeah but they're not they're not as bad as um some of the other assholes right but there are definitely some guys that could be moved to to less secure facilities for you know so for being good boys now we got that portion out of the way now let's talk about the cells. Okay. And how many prisoners are in each cell and so on. So the prisoners spend roughly 20 to 24 hours in their cells alone. Good. Now that depends on which unit they're in though. So it could vary. 
The prisoners are housed in cells that are seven feet by twelve feet. <laughs> that's a fu- <laughs> that's a fucking closet yeah. with a toilet in it. The the walls are solid and have a small forty two inch single window that is placed just so that the pr- prisoners can only see the sky in the buildings. Okay, so forty two inches wide. No, high. Okay, so I'm so, so the window is up 42 inches off the ground. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually saw there was like. Which, a, I mean, that's really not that far off I the saw ground. A photo. It's oh, so it's 42 inches high. So and it's placed just so that. Yeah, it's like that's just so, a hair under four feet. Which, which I'm guessing, how they have it placed, is so that if you look out of it, you can only see the sky. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the other buildings. And then you just see, just the building portion. You can't see another. So think of the architecture that goes into this. Okay. Oh, I've seen the place. It's fucking weird looking. Yeah, but just to, to, to have be the architect that has to design this structure so that no single window can line up. Right. So you cannot, so no matter what you do, you can't see. No, I wonder, is this, I wonder if they're actually tapered. Oh, I'm sure they'd have to be. Tapered like, you know, I don't know, in or out or something. Right. You know, it has to be one way, so it's it, the vision is you know blocked. Either that, or if you were to do it out of like a reinforced like one way glass, so you can't see in, but you can see out. Maybe another option. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not a prison designer. No, but not that, anymore. I I stopped playing prison tycoon. Life? Oh. No, prison tycoon. That's, oh, that game's oh. fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now their doors are solid, other than a small opening, which I'm guessing the opening is. Open from the Lunch outside. Hatch. Yeah. So it's open from the outside of the cell to allow guards to communicate with the prisoners. And also, I'm guessing it might be um, for food. I, I bet it's one of those sliders. Yeah. That locks on the outside. That, like, if you stuck your finger in there, you can lose it when they slide it back. Yeah. And I, I wonder if it's like, okay, hey, uh, stick your hands in or something like that. I don't know. I don't... There's, there's, there's probably like a small tray on the inside of it. You slide it, and you can slide the tray, and they take the tray, and they slide it back. Yeah, it's probably what happens. Like with some of these guys, I'd, if I was the guard, I'd walk by, slide the thing open, just put my ass against it, and fart, and close it. Like, yeah. Ha, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, crazy That'd stuff. That'd be funny. <laughs> so now just fucking air shitting on inmates. <laughs> so now my guess is the reason for like the slot I have it all closed is so that the that they can't actually see across. Right, right, Because, right. I mean, they can't, they, they basically don't even know. Right. You know. And I would imagine it's probably at a height where it'd be hard to, like, if it was open, it'd be hard to look out through it. You know, it probably wouldn't be, like, at eye level. I would imagine it's probably, like, knee level or in that neighborhood there. Mm-hmm. But, again, I've never been to a Supermax prison, so. Anybody out there that listening to this that's ever been to Supermax, explain how the fucking lunch doors work. Yeah. I, it's, I don't you know. You know who we're talking to. Yes. You. You people. <laughs> what do you mean, you people? <laughs> the ones that work at them, okay? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> so, now all the cell units, other than H, Joker, and Kilo, um, also have an interior barred uh, wall with a single sliding door, which... Together with the exterior door forms a sally port in each cell. Oh, okay. Okay. So you have the door and then bars. So you have to open the, the, the bars and then open the door. Yeah, okay, I get that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So now each cell is furnished with a modular concrete bed, Ugh. desk, and a stool... And then it has a stainless steel combination sink toilet. Sink toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Road toilet. Yep. Now, um, the cell. Make that prison hooch in your (laughs) toilet. (laughs) I bet those are the ones where it's like you got shitter on the bottom, and then where the tank is is like a sink to wash your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Small. Uh, Cells in all the units include a shower with an automatic shutoff valve. Mm, Okay. Uh, Many cells, except those in the shoe, are equipped with a radio and television that offers religious what? and educational programming. That's all it does. Huh. Uh, along with So you some... got like PBS or Pat Roberts, one of the two. 
Well, no. It's religion or educational. Like I so said. It's like whatever educational, like, you know, hey, you know, dumbass, then this is how you do be good or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I want to watch Arthur. <laughs> uh, so, so it has the religious and educational programming along with some uh, general interest in reg- recreational programming. Now, inmates wishing to take advantage of the educational program at ADX Supermax do so by tuning into specific learning channels on the television in their cell. Ah, okay. Um, there are no group classes. So I'm get so I would just like some closed circuit shit. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was gonna say. So I that's why I was seeing this, I'm like, okay, it has to be closed circuit. You know, they have like specific things where okay, hey, this 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 runs all the time or it's on a, a loop. Yeah. And that you're not like watching fucking like this old house or something, unfortunately. No. Unfortunately not. No. They gotta pay Bob Vila to come in and do some fucking remote courses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that'd be the best time in jail ever. Fuck. Uh, yeah. So televisions are often... Can I interrupt you quick? What? You know what I would love no. to hear, like, be able to, like, prisoners do? What? I would love to hear prisoners do a fucking podcast. Just, like, on everyday life in jail, like, why the hell you're there, you know? That'd be interesting as fuck. Or have a guard bring these assholes into a room and, like, chain him to a D-ring on a table and be like, okay, we're going to talk. Click. Let's figure out why, why are you here? What'd you do, buddy? <laughs> what course of... What, I'm innocent, god damn what it. What series of fucking poor life decisions did you do to end up working here? The, the mobster <laughs> guys would be like, hey, man. Oh, those motherfuckers would talk. They're in a fucking supermax prison. Nobody's going to get them. I know your family. They'd talk. Don't worry. They'll they, be safe. They'd talk. I think they would. I don't know. Well, they'd probably... No, they'd get you talking about something. Well, one of them talked and got his ass out of here, so... Oh. <laughs> okay. Spoiler alert. Ooh. So, televisions are often withheld from prisoners as punishment. The prisoners eat all three meals that they get in their cells, and most of the time, the only way that the prisoners are allowed out of their cells is for some limited social or legal visits. Right. So meaning like like medical treatments. Um, now the social visits are uh, like to go to like the library, mm-hmm. the law library, or um, to go like, you know, say, yeah, like for medical, stuff yeah. like that, or meet with your lawyer right. or whatever. Um, now for a few hours a week, there is, they do allow them to have indoor or outdoor exercise. Now, the exception to this is the Range 13 unit, which is the most secure and isolated unit. Yeah. The prisoners uh, in the control unit are isolated from the other prisoners at all times, even during recreation for extended terms, um, often lasting six years or more. Jesus. Their only meaningful contact with other humans is with the ADX staff members themselves. That's it. Uh, and those are people that are not there to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> They're no. not going to like have like casual conversations, be like, oh, hey, bud, how's it going? How's the family? Oh, you know, the kids are their kids. You know, yeah. these are guys that, like, if you talk to them too long, they're going to fucking brain you with a nightstick and be like, shut the fuck up and walk. Yeah, so obviously, so, so some of these, they're allowed to have some interaction with, you know, other inmates. Like prison like prison staff, like you have, like, a psychologist or some shit like that, but yeah. you can talk to them. So, now, the ones that... Getting back to the exercise portion, some of them, because they're so bad, they have, <clears throat> they're let out of their cells to exercise, and they have uh, to go into what they call the pens, um, or what some call the empty swimming pool, <laughs> which is a concrete area with skylights, which inmates go to alone. And they uh, take are only allowed to have like the max number of steps they can do is ten. <laughs> no shit. Back and forth, and, and uh, they are they can walk around thirty feet in a circle. Huh. But they're basically in like an empty swimming pool. Yeah. So it's it's like basically they get let out and f- they're in they're in their own area. That's it. If you're like, hey, can I get like a tennis ball to throw at the wall or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, you lost your ball privileges after the fucking beach ball incident. I, I got to think, uh, so that's pretty much 
the background on the whole thing, but I kind of wanted to... Now, did, did you figure out how much area this place covers? Because it's uh, fucking no, huge. No, it's huge. It's like... It takes up 49 acres. Okay. That's a pretty good size area. I mean... So we should probably just, like, work that in. Yeah, no, it's it's not a big deal. I mean, that's fucking... That's nuts. That's a... So, yeah, 49 acres is... is that's, like, f- literally 49 times the amount of my property. That's, like, a good-sized farm up here. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's big. And it's not like it's all rolling hills and shit. It's, like, buildings and fucking wire and fence and really mad dogs. <clears throat> yeah. So I, I kind of... I, I got to thinking about, you know, this whole thing... Before we get into your portion, mm-hmm. um, I got to thinking about this, and I kind of want your opinion on it or your thoughts. <sighs> I'm because, sorry, I'm all out of thoughts. <laughs> well, you might have some. Um, I was thinking myself. Okay, I asked myself, could you, could you live in an environment like this? And if you could, how long would you last? Well, I mean, if if you are in a situation where you put yourself. No, 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 no. I'm just, just, just generalizing. You know, like, okay, if, if, let's just per oh, say, me? pathetically, me, let's just say, pathetic, hypothetically, you did put yourself in this position. Okay. Okay. You know, could you put your, could you live in this environment without doing harm to yourself? To like, you know, say, uh, have to be moved to some psychiatric, right. you know, facility or whatever, or you know, you end up dead because you, you just, you commit suicide. So. Think you know, after all this information, could you survive in it? Would you be? Able, would you think that you know you could survive in it? And or in how long? Um, would or in how long would it? You think it would probably take you to adjust? Do you think? I think it would adjust fairly quickly, like a few months, like six eight months. Um, and if they had a decent library where I could get like some books other than law books, it'd just be like. I'm going to be here a minute. Can we get some, like, fucking classic horror books or something? Like, i take some Dracula, Frankenstein, whatever. But they probably wouldn't let you have that. I don't know. I don't know. They wouldn't probably let you have that because it probably would excite you. No, it's more just like I don't want to read fucking law books because it's boring as fuck. And I'm in here by myself, so I might as well do something. So it'd be like, give me some decent books and some, like, paper and a pencil, and I could probably keep myself entertained for a while. Uh, I don't know how long I would last. I really don't, but I know I'd sleep a lot. Because <laughs> when I have nothing else to do, I sleep and eat. But you wouldn't be able to eat because you... Well, I'd eat three times a day. Yeah, that's but, it. But, you know. No, I'd probably just sleep a fucking bunch. They'd probably think I was dead just because I wasn't moving. I and mean, to get my own shower, I'd be all right for a while. I wouldn't be my. I mean, I wouldn't mind that too much, you know, because, I mean, whatever, you know. I'm already an introvert, so... I don't like dealing with other humans as it is, so. Yeah. And, like, that but, little bit of interaction with a guard you might get to be like, hey, you know, hey, how's your day? My day's great. I'm in jail. You know, that'd probably be enough for me. <laughs> See, like, <laughs> so my my, th- my theory on it is, okay, so I think, I think I would be okay for a little bit, but then after a while of not not having to be able to contact family yeah that would that, suck. that would bug me yeah that would that would probably that would get me because would, there, there there's things that would eventually break everybody i think yeah i mean not not being able to contact my family would probably be one of them but like staying in the place I mean, if you're not gonna, f- if I'm not gonna be out in a general pop, I kind of. you're if you're in the supermax, you're not. Yeah, I'd if really I was don't in regular, care. I think I would last less time in regular jail than I would in a supermax. Because in regular jail, you've got a like, you've got a hierarchy of things, and you have choices that you have to make so that you don't get fucking shivved in the lunchroom. And a lot of those choices are not great. <laughs> it all depends on which you know prison you go to. Yeah, but still, there's. The, the, I feel like a supermax prison would be less detrimental to your physical health than being yeah. in a regular prison would be, because here you have no contact with other inmates. Regular prison, 
you look at somebody wrong or you sit at the wrong place in the fucking lunchroom and they're probably going to try to cut your head off in your cell. But it all depends on who you are. Yeah, I guess. If you're Kuklinski, no one's going to fuck with you. Well, dude, he killed a million fucking people for the mafia. Yes. And he was also like six foot seven, so. Yes, but nobody, while he was probably, when he was at Comstock, nobody fucked with him. Well, he got moved from Comstock to a different one, and his brother was in the same prison at the, at one point in time, and because uh, I watched a um, a documentary that they did with him, I'm like, oh, so your, your your younger brother was in here with you. He's like, did you guys ever get a chance to talk? He's like, yeah, we talk in the hallway occasionally. Well, what kind of things would you say? He's like, oh, nothing really. We're just passing. I just look at him and go, fuck you. And he'd pretty much say the same thing back to me. That was our conversations. <laughs> 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 like, but. That motherfucker will be his own episode because, holy shit. Yeah, but I mean... Woof. For someone like that... But then there's people like uh, like Richard Chase, who was a serial killer in California that was a fucking fruitcake. Um, <laughs> he was crazy enough that other inmates left him alone. Like, there's a, there's re- there's a, a thing that I'd read where he had been interviewed by some guy, somebody writing a book about him or some something of that nature uh-huh. and they're like they're sitting there talking to him and they're like in the the cafeteria like they brought him in like segregated him from everybody else and like so he could eat his lunch and you could talk the guy could talk to him at the same time and he's like so how, how do you feel about being in here this that just asking him questions and he just like reaches into his pocket and pulls out like a handful of macaroni and cheese and puts it on the table and he goes i keep this so that the aliens will leave me alone <laughs> and then he took it off the table and put it back in his pocket <laughs> So, like, there's people that are fucking crazy enough that they don't get fucked with in jail. But then there's other people, like Jeffrey Dahmer, where they're just like, oh, I heard what you did. I'm going to fucking kill you with a barbell because I'm having a not great day. Well, he was killed in prison. Oh, he got fucked up in prison. Because it wasn't just him. The guy that killed him also killed another guy because they were all in a cleaning crew together. They were cleaning the gym, and I, I don't know if... Like Dahmer and the other guy were having a conversation, and number three fucking snapped and beat them both to death with a, like a fucking uh, like a barbell, like what you'd put plates on yeah. to, to lift. Which I mean, you, you got to have some room to swing that motherfucker around with any kind of speed or force. Yeah, and he swung it around with speed and force. Oh, so okay, so pretty much the we, only we, way we, you're we not would... safe in jail is if you're a child molester because they will fucking yes. kill you. They take fucking day bets. one. And I've heard of guards actually taking bets on how long people will survive. And you know what? I don't feel bad about that. So, so okay. So we would both, you know, we both think that we would be okay for a little bit. Yeah, it'd be fine for a, I mean. a couple years, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, with that said, let's take a little bit of a break, Whoop. and we'll come right back. We are back. We're back. So now that we've covered the architecture portion of our episode. <laughs> yes. So now you know... Where you want to be when you go to this prison. Yeah. Well, you know what you're going to be looking at mostly, which is the sky and the outside of other buildings. And not so much of anybody else. Right. So for my half of this episode, I'm going to talk about some of the more famous and infamous men locked up in this prison. I'm going to break it down into three separate categories. I'm going to break it down into gangsters, terrorists, and miscellaneous dirtbags. Okay. And for your benefit, I'm going to start off with miscellaneous dirt bags. Oh, that wasn't for my benefit. <laughs> so, or were you talking about the listeners? Everybody's benefit. Oh. If you're within the reach of my voice, it's in, it's in your. It's going to be. It's going to be beneficial that I start with the miscellaneous dirt bags. Well, you know what? Fine, be like that then. So first on our dirt bag list is going to be Barry Mills. Barry- oh, Barry! Oh, dude, this guy's a piece of shit, and I feel like I'm going to say that a lot talking about these people. Well, why don't we just say, hey, he's a piece of shit, or, yeah, just he's a piece of shit, because there's no she. These guys are all, like, as my dad would say, they should have all been swallowed. Ah, yes, (laughs) Um, yes. And just a prerequisite, everybody on this list, except for this dude, could potentially be their own episode. Okay. Because there's that much information on the shit that they did. Okay. So, Barry Mills was born in Windsor, California in 1948. He started his prison career in 1969 and would never be a free man again. (laughs) I love it. He started his prison career. Dude, he... he, (laughs) It was more like a job because he bounced from 
you know, that's way location way. to location. I, I know. I, I, but, I just, it's just funny how like you know, <laughs> so many people, so many of these murderers and and all this other stuff were being institutionalized most of their lives. Yep. So like you know, it's like well, all right. He started his prison career back when he was 17 years old. Right. And it almost makes you wonder if the reason that they can't move on is because they don't know how to because they've been in prison their whole fucking lives. Well, or that's all they know. Exactly. Look at Charles Manson. He was the first time he got arrested. He was like 13 years old and he got thrown in a fucking boy's home, which was basically jail. But he and he did. was in and out the whole rest of his fucking life. But he got out. I mean, no, he didn't. didn't. He's fucking dead. No, no, no. I'm saying he got out of prison for a while he get here and there. But it was never I mean, like an extended period. Well, it's it's like um um, uh, what's his name from Shawshank? Um, John what, Coffey. No, the old dude. <laughs> no, wrong fucking show. Morgan no, Freeman. Uh no. Um, the old dude that hang, ends up hanging himself. Oh, I don't remember. Um, he basically says he, he was scared to leave. Yeah. Because you don't know what to do outside. All he knew, he knew that from the time he was, I don't know, 15, 16, something like that. Yeah. All the way up through until he was in his 70s. Pretty much. So this winter, when he was first incarcerated in San Quentin in 1969, would very, very quickly join an organization called the Aryan Brotherhood, which is not as fun as it sounds. These are like scum of the earth, white supremacist prison gang guys. So okay. he ensured that he would never be free again in 1979 when he nearly decapitated a fellow inmate at USP, which is United States prison uh, in Atlanta over a gambling debt. <laughs> in 1996, he had been one of the top uh, five ranking members of the Aryan Brotherhood in the country. For, like between all the prisons <laughs> and they, there's a hierarchy there's it's just like the mafia like oh, i just want to know how they, like okay all right so um <clears throat> the, we're gonna we have to rate this uh well it, it, it how goes how high you were at it goes <laughs> on seniority and like your level of willingness to do violent things to other bad people well, obviously... Yeah, he's not a nice guy. He's willing to do the bad shit. Right. So in 1996, he had become kind of one of these top five members of the, the Aryan Brotherhood. Um, and they decided to absorb another white supremacist prison gang called the Dirty White Boys. In 1997, he ordered Aryan Brotherhood members to start a race war by attacking a group called the DC Blacks, which is a, a black prison gang. Yeah, obviously. Not a lot of white dudes in that game. <laughs> Just like there's not a lot of Mexican dudes in the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> oh, stop. I'm going to say that there's probably between zero and negative one members. <laughs> Listen, there might be. Okay. So in 2006, Mills, uh, a man by the name of Charles Hartzell and Tyler Bingham, who are, th- who are basically the three... Uh, leaders of the Aryan Brotherhood uh-huh. were charged with murder, conspiracy, drug trafficking, and racketeering because they are connected to like street gangs, basically, that are also part of the Aryan Brotherhood. Yeah. And these guys outside take their orders from the guys inside. So everything that these guys are doing out here, they're doing under the orders of the guys in here. So when these guys get busted for conspiracy or drug trafficking, these guys in here get it too. Okay. So all three of these guys would receive life sentences with no chance for parole, and Mills would die of heart failure in 2018. Sad. What a piece of shit. I'm shutting a tear. Yeah. You ready for another giant piece of shit, but just in a different direction? So hold on, hold on. What year was he? He was born in 1948. He oh. died in uh, 2018. Oh, wow. Pretty old for a guy in prison. Well, I mean, you get the best care, so... That's true. Why not? And he's been there fucking... Why not live into your, you know, nine, uh, 80s? He had been there since he was... He's been, he'd been in prison pretty much since he was 19 on. <laughs> so he'd been, spent the better part of, like, you All know... about 19 60, years of his life. Yeah, yeah he'd spent a lot, years, lot of ass, you know? long, ta- long ass time in jail. Yeah. So Robert Hansen who is not the same one that a lot of other people will think of where he was a serial killer in Alaska. 
we'll get to him eventually. This okay. guy was born in Chicago in 1944. He was an FBI agent from 1976 to 2001. He was arrested in February of 2001 after decades of the FBI trying to track down a mole who's been selling information to the KGB and uh, the GRU, which is basically um, like the Russian version of the CIA almost. Okay. And he's been selling these people um, like government secrets, military information, all this other shit. Since pretty much day one. So he was a Soviet plant huh. from pretty much the time he left the FBI Academy in Quantico, so Quantico yeah. to the time that he was arrested. Wow. So the FBI actually would pay the KGB $7 million to get information on who these moles were. Because there was more than one. For his treason and espionage, Hansen was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences. His actions would be called possibly the worst intelligence disaster in U.S. history. Now, why wasn't he shot? I don't know. He probably should have been. Because, uh, uh, whatever, hung, you're supposed you're su- Treason is a, I believe, is punishable by death, if I'm is. not wrong. It is. It is a punishable by death offense. You are supposed to be firing squad, fucking, you're dead. Yeah. Offense. But, I mean, this is also... He was arrested at at a time when we were kind of, like, going through some shit as a country. So? You know. Fuck that. I know. He probably should have just been fucking shot in the teeth and left behind a dumpster bleeding somewhere. I I mean, you sell it your fucking country. Fuck you. Yeah. Especially to the goddamn Soviet Union in the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Like, that was kind of a pivotal time. (laughs) I mean, yes. We're not the greatest country. No, I mean, we're, we're a great country. We do some sh- some shady shit. We do. But, I mean, for being a country that, you know, has, is the biggest melting pot in the world, mm-hmm. I mean, come on. <laughs> nothing's, nothing's that, you know, sacred where you gotta. To, to me, the thing that, that pisses me off the most is this guy knowingly went through and said, I'm going to take this oath to defend my country and protect my country. And the whole time had his fucking fingers crossed behind his back. Just going, ah, surprise motherfuckers. I'm going to sell all this stuff that I can to the Russians. It wasn't the first time. I mean, it, not the first and not the last. No. Um, I mean, our whistleblowers nowadays are a little bit more justified in what they do. I think. Like you get guys like Edward, uh, Edward Snowden. Well, and, uh, Snow- Snowden wasn't, He's not blowing the whistle. He's not selling secrets. No, he's exposing, he's exposing the truth. Exposing the truth. Same with people like Julian Assange, where he's like, "Hey, there's some awful shit going on. You guys might want to look into this, but since you can't find it, I know a guy, wink, wink, that can get it for you." Yeah. So, and, and I, I don't, I don't look at him, look at the, those two with the same disdain no, as this guy for sure. Because. Um, there's a difference. There's another guy that's going to come up in our dishonorable mentions at the end that I would put his name in the same category as this piece of shit. Okay. Um, so a- another one that is kind of strange that you wouldn't really expect is a man by the name of Dwight York. He was the leader of a group called the Nuwabian Nation, which was um, a nation of Islam, like offshoot splinter group kind of thing, where he had joined the Nation of Islam, become like a, 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 like a higher ranking member. And then decided that he didn't really like how it was going, so he was going to take his followers and go do his own thing. So he starts a cult. Okay. Um, very, very interesting. Very long story. We should cover this guy at some point. All right. Um, I'm up for a good cult. Oh, dude. And this one's fucking wild. A cult that doesn't piss me off. It'll piss you off because, I mean, they do the same culty shit that everybody else does. Um, well, as long as it's not the kids. Yeah, there's kids. They they do shit to kids. <sighs> it's a fucking cult. That's what they do. What the the first one I covered didn't do anything to kids. No, but they were fucking like Dungeons and Dragons crazy. Hey, hey, <laughs> easy, calm down. <laughs> and nothing, not that there's anything wrong with that, but these guys were fucking like batshit crazy. Um, but he, like, after he was arrested, he tries to claim that he was um. Persecuted? No, he tries to claim that he was the son of... Satan? 
some Sam? African um, ah voodoo priest. No, even even worse. Oh, he was a pre- he was the son of some like African quote unquote president. Oh. So he's like, you guys can't do anything D- because diplomatic community. I have diplomatic community, and they're like, no, motherfucker, you were born in Boston. We know who your parents were. <laughs> um, no, I was adopted. See, right? What happened was, but geez. his 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 group spent most of its time in the New York City area, um, and then they would end up buying some land in Georgia to do all of this, all their weird like, I, I they do all their weird cult stuff. But where they are in Georgia, they're practicing Muslims doing all of this stuff in the mid-90s in Georgia. You're in the hot of Dixie. Yeah, not a great place to be doing shit like this because your neighbors are looking at you like, the fuck are these guys doing? So they end up calling the feds because they're like, there's some weird shit going on here because this motherfucker's built an amusement park and a fucking casino on his property. And we think he might be diddling kids. Turns out... He was diddling kids. He was actually charged with over a hundred counts of child molestation. Um, so he went to jail. He's in ADX Florence. He is eligible for parole in twenty one twenty when he's approximately one hundred and seventy five years old. So maybe we can get his fucking skeleton paroled or something. Huh. It's a real weird story. I listened to another podcast cover and they did a two parter, and I was like. This is fucking wild. Wow. <laughs> There's some real strange shit going on here. That's 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 kind of fucked up. Yeah. I mean, oh, okay. I I just don't see how he ended up in in ADX because just because he's a child molester. He was a child molester and he crossed state lines doing so. Therefore, it becomes a federal crime. Yeah. Okay. And he was also like racketeering and. All this other shit, and there was some a couple of alleged okay. deaths connected to the cult that he may or may not have ordered directly. God damn you, Carol bunch, Baskins. Bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, you ready to move on to Category 2? Let's move on to Category 2. And I want to... I'm not picking on Muslims here. You are too. But Category 2 has got a lot of them in it. Category two, we're going to be talking about terrorists who are housed in ADX well, Florence. Like we know, right? There is a section just for them. Yeah, uh, and a lot of these guys would all end up in the same wing, which I'm guessing is probably that H wing, which was nicknamed yeah. Bombers Row for a while. Yeah, which I you know, it's kind of a cutesy little name for a pile of just real, real bad people. Um, and these people here, I'm not even scratching the surface with the amount of them that are in it. This okay. is just like a handful of people that have been cro- uh, charged with uh, with terrorist terroristic shit. Okay. Um, but there's a lot more in here than I covered. <laughs> um, first one might sound familiar. Zacharias Musawi. That one ringing a bell? Yeah. The Mas- uh, Mas- Musawi, yes. Uh, yeah. I don't remember what he did. He's, he's one of the men that was arrested for conspiracy to commit acts of terrorism linked to the 9-11 attacks. Uh, okay. He was the guy that basically missed his flight to get to Boston to go with them. Ah. So he was arrested August, and this is why he missed his flight, because he was arrested August 16th of 2001. They basically got him for immigration violations, but I think that was just a workaround to go, we think this guy might be a terrorist, so we have to find some reason to actually arrest him. Okay. So when the agents uh, like burst into his apartment, they took him down. They arrested him. They found flight manuals for Boeing 747 commercial airliners, which is what would eventually be used to hit the World Trade Center. Yeah, two of them. Yep. Um, they found a couple of handguns. They found a couple of knives. They found the components to make explosives. And they also found that he had been... They'd found receipts where he'd been taking flight lessons in Minnesota, where he was arrested. And this piece of shit serving life without parole also. Again, um, there's some people that you should probably just execute immediately. Because think about it. Somebody had to act as this dude's defense attorney. Well, everybody gets a defense attorney. But how do you do that morally? To go, I have to defend a guy who was arrested for planning on killing as many people as he could. 
doesn't matter what country they're in. You have to justify that to yourself and be able to sleep at night. Well, lawyers don't sleep at night because I'm pretty sure they're goddamn vampires. But I don't think it's so much that you have to try to make an argument as to why this guy shouldn't be spending the rest of his life in jail. Yeah, uh, but I, I just, I just, I think it's a little bit easy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I mean, know. For me, morally, I have a, hard, I find a hard place for that to get comfortable in my brain. Going, you know, I could probably figure out a reason why you don't deserve to be in jail, <laughs> even though I know you're a piece of shit and everybody else knows you're a piece of shit. I, mean, I can. I, I'm going to try my best to make sure you don't go to jail. I think it's every once in a while, though. You have to take. A, you have to take one for the team. You know, you Ugh. have to. You have to take one for the team. So, meaning that you have to. You know, you defend someone that's a piece of shit. Yeah, but this is like weapons grade piece of shit. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, yeah. man. It's a paycheck, buddy. I mean, you're gonna get paid no matter what. Yeah. You might think they're a piece of shit. You're just basically the public defender saying, okay, you But know. the thing with me is, like, when you know, you know in your heart that this person is scum. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to do this because I'm still going to get money. And the biggest thing is, I'm going to get my name out there. Because when they're writing all the articles, they're going to have my name in there as the defense attorney. So everybody knows that I'm also a piece of shit. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Are you ready for number two on our terrorist list? Number two of... Uh, number two of a few. Um, his given name may not ring a bell, but I'm sure his nickname will. Okay. Richard Reed. No. This guy was the shoe bomber. Remember him, that big, tall, goofy-looking fuck? Yeah, it didn't didn't explode anything though. No, because he was dumb. Well, um, hey, you know what? You can't fix. You just no, but you can be arrested for attempting to blow up a, a you know an airliner. Well, he didn't attempt shit because he didn't even. He did attempt because they he was in the air when he tried. No, um, they were, he was still on the runway. No, this was flight uh, sixty three from Miami to Paris, December twenty second, two thousand one. Um. They were they were they had taken off and another passenger had smelled smoke. Someone sitting near him, oh. and a flight attendant walks by, and the passenger just kind of like looks at him and's like, pointing at him is like, again you kind of have to think this is right after nine eleven. Yeah, you got a big tall Arabic looking guy in a plane. Yeah, everybody, and people everybody's... are like suspicious already. Yeah, yeah. But this guy is the reason that people are suspicious of people like this on planes. Yeah. Yes. So definitely. the he kind of points over to him as the flight attendant goes by, and the attendant's like, "Okay, sure, whatever," and keeps going. As the as the attendant comes back by, she sees that Reed is hunched over in his seat, with one of his shoes in his lap, trying to strike matches, because he had explosives built into his shoe. Yeah. Which is he... why you have to take your fucking shoes off at airports. But because, <laughs> thank God, this guy was sweaty. Because the reason that he couldn't get the fuse to ignite uh -huh. is because how it was built into his shoe, his feet had sweat through and soaked the fuse. <laughs> so as he's sitting there trying to strike matches and he's probably like looking around like a crazy person, a group of fucking passengers and flight attendants tackle this guy, like pound the shit out of him and subdue him with like seat belts and other things that they can try to like tie him up with. So he was sentenced sentenced and is now serving three consecutive life sentences, and then another 110 years on top of that. Why add the extra time, you ask? I don't know, is the answer. I don't understand. The, the, uh, we were talking before the thing. I still don't understand it. It, it makes no goddamn podcast, sense. I, I just don't understand the whole, like, hey, well, you know, you're, you're in prison for life without the possibility of parole. Oh, wait, yeah, you have to do another, like, you know... X amount of time. Well, I, I could see, like, in Norway or Sweden where the life sentence is, like, 20 years. So you could legitimately go to prison for life and then come back out 20 years later. Like uh, that guy from uh, Burr's Room did. It was a Burr's Room, I think. One that killed a couple other dudes in different bands and burned down a handful of churches. Uh. Yeah, like, he wasn't, like, okay, 
prison in Norway, he had a fucking couch, he had an N64, wow. he had a window that opened out in his well, cell. their life in prison is a little bit different. Yeah, they're just like, oh no, you're hanging out, you know, it's fine. Like, the fucking doors for these people's cells are wide open, they can just come and go as they please. It's like, that must be fucking nice, I want to go to jail in Norway. Don't have to work, It'd be great. Number three may ring a bell, uh, Zokar Sar- uh, Sarniev. He was a... The, ch- the, the, the Boston. Yes, one of the two. Yes, because his brother's dead. Yeah. This Chechen-born terrorist and his family fled their homeland and gained asylum in the U.S. in 2002. And he and his brother, Tamerlan, became naturalized citizens on September 11th, 2012. How fucking ironic, considering what they were going to do less than a year later. He and his brother, Tamerlan, were, uh, would execute the bombing of the Boston Marathon, killing three outright and injuring somewhere in the neighborhood of 280 to 290 other people. These were the guys that built bombs out of pressure cookers with full of ball bearings and nails and yes. glass and all kinds of nasty other shit. That's why buying a pressure cooker for so long? Was... Yeah, you kind of went on a watch list if you're trying to buy yeah. one. Yeah, I think you still might. I don't know. Uh, they asked for ID. I know that. Which, I mean, who the fuck would have thought about that up until... One asshole does something. Two assholes does something. Two assholes, and all of a sudden you can't buy a pressure cooker. Um, So after a manhunt, which was a few days, like three, four days, somewhere in there. Somewhere like that, yeah. And a quick shootout, uh, Tamerlan would end up taking a dirt nap, and Zokar would be captured and sentenced to the death penalty, which he's still waiting on in... ADX Florence. Um, again, there's a lot of weird conspiracy shit that goes into the Boston bombing, which if we ever cover it, I would like to kind of dig into some of that because there was a lot of weird shit that doesn't quite match up with what they say. Well, I mean, but this guy is still a piece of shit. Well, I mean, when you shoot, you supposedly get in a shootout with this kid who's what 21 maybe not little, even not at the even, time a little less like 17 something like that yeah he was like 18 19 yeah. somewhere in there he was hiding in a goddamn boat or whatever yeah and you supposedly get in a shootout with him and you shoot the shit out of the out of the thing come on you could have just flash banged him or whatever and took his ass no you had to shoot up the you know you didn't get in a shootout with him yeah. You outnumber his ass. And it's not even just that. Like, there's other shit that goes into it, like, where they're, you know, they have, like, sec- supposedly have security footage where they're like, oh, we saw the guy there, but he didn't have a backpack. But we did see these, like, five burly-ass white dudes that looked like they worked for a you know, private military company carrying backpacks, that- and then they took off real quick. Yeah, see, now, I have seen footage of the yeah. same thing, too. This there's said, a lot of strange that shit that goes into it. basically says that he, they were just set up. Yeah. But, again, it's one of those things where, like, we'd have to get deep into that because there's a lot of really and weird shit. there was a whole martial law thing, which yep. was actually illegal. Yep. Which should not have happened. <laughs> no. But, yeah, it's, uh... It, it, because that's only, a, only, only Congress can declare martial law. Right. The city, the city can't. The only thing the city could have done, technically, was a state of emergency. Yeah. Which would have been fine, because you could say, it's a state of emergency, we have terrorists on the loose, we need everybody to stay inside. Which is basically the same thing as martial law, except yes. then you can just roll out the police instead of the National Guard. Yes. Um, so, number, these last two are... So, we're number three? Yeah, I've oh, got... this is number four. This is number three. Uh, this will be number four. I have a total of five in our, our terrorist okay. list. Okay. Um, and these are probably two of the better known names Underwear in Robert? the facility. No, the underwear bomber's in there also, but I didn't put him in there because I was like, we already have the shoe bomber, and then we also have the next guy who was the Una bomber. Uh, so we can't have underwear bomber, Una bomber, you know. Uh-huh. you know. So Ted Kaczynski has been locked up in this place since Christ was in preschool, basically. Well, ever since, what, uh, when he got caught? Yeah. Um, what was it, uh, 90s? Like 95, 96, somewhere yeah. in there? Uh, don't want to go too in-depth into him because I do definitely have plans to cover him. Um but he, he's probably one of the few people that's probably in here that's suited. Yeah, and he's happy that he's here, basically, because he's like, oh, I'm, I'll, I'm still being left alone. But, yeah, you know, now I, don't get, alone. now I don't get to make my Hobby Lobby trips to make explosives. 
Yes, there is no... I'm going to go cut down a tree and make... Uh, Can I go to the wood shop? No, you crazy fuck. Get out of here. <laughs> you also smell like milk, apparently. See, that's probably why they didn't <laughs> let him go to normal prison. Right. Because there is no wood shop for you, motherfucker. But... Oh, they're like, like, Mr. Kaczynski, okay. <laughs> yeah, um... See, yeah, we want to send you to normal prison, but... No. We're afraid we can't let you anywhere near the wood shop. <laughs> like... <laughs> But I like making things. I just need toothpicks. <laughs> um, but this guy is kind of a sad story because he was very, very smart. He was, he and I is. think the U.S. government fucking destroyed his brain because they're like, he was in Harvard at like sixteen. He skipped like junior, senior high school year because he was that smart and went to Harvard. Yeah, and then. He got fucking harangued into the whole LSD experiment thing, and the U.S. government fucked his brain up. Yep. And then he went and became a professor at Berkeley, which, again, they don't let stupid people do that. No. And he kind of just had enough and was like, fuck this. I'm moving to Montana. I want to be left the fuck alone. And then he decided, like, I need to start trying to kill these people that I used to work with and these other, like, heads of industry that are trying to advance technology, which I think is destroying the world. But he also did it at... Um, at random occasions. Well, but he also... Mostly abortion clinics, because he was against that. Yeah, he was a weird dude. Like, he didn't care for many people. Um, but he did end up killing three people, and he injured 23 others with these explosives. Uh, he is serving life in ADX, which is probably a good thing. Which is probably not too much longer for him. I mean, he's in the 70s or 80s now. Yeah. But... You know, anybody that lives off that much fucking wild animals and wild fruit and shit that you grow, you got a pretty hardy constitution. Yeah, so he's going to probably outlive a lot of people. Right. So last but certainly not least on our terrorist list is going to be probably, arguably the biggest waste of human life that's that not there anymore, but was in this prison. Okay. Uh, Timothy McVeigh. I know you know that one. Yeah. So this white supremacist piece of shit was one of the many men responsible for the April 19th, 1995 bombing of the Alfred P. Murrah building in Oklahoma City. Uh, McVeigh and an quote unquote unknown accomplice parked a large rider moving van packed with explosives, mostly made out of fertilizer and other items under the building and left before it detonated via... um, Time bomb, basically. Um, The blast was so large that it blew damn near half the building off, and people felt the explosion miles away. I think it actually did blow half the building off. It did. It was, was, if not more. I I, I think it was, yeah, because, I mean... I mean, there was enough force to it that the only thing they found of the truck was the rear axle, which is heavy in those, and it was somewhere like a quarter of a mile away. Um, it's crazy. The blast killed a total of 168 people and injured another 680. Um, among the dead would be 19 children that were at the daycare center in the building whose parents were working there. Um, <laughs> the, the, the worst part about the whole thing is he had done enough scouting and reconnaissance of this building to know where things were and this piece of shit parked the truck directly under the daycare center before he left um oh. this is another one there's all there's a lot of conspiracies that go into it um with who quote unquote was actually responsible where the FBI and ATF were that were stationed in the building that day. There's a lot of weird shit that goes into this one as well. Um, yeah. So he and Terry Nickel, who was one of the one of his accomplices, were both in ADX Florence for a period of time. The only one that's actually been other one that's been brought to justice, right? Because the other guy, the mystery man, vanished without a trace. Yeah. Um, Which I think is still just Terry Nichols. I don't know, because the, the description they give doesn't sound like him. But um, so he would actually be held in that area that we talked about before that was known as Bombers Row with Ted Kaczynski, 
uh, Louis King Blood Felipe, who was the founder of the New York City chapter of the Latin Kings. It was another pretty interesting street gang. Uh, Ramzi Youssef, who was one of the, I think, two or three men that was captured after the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Um, but mercifully, this dickhead, Timothy McVeigh, was executed June 11th, 2001. Um, but he was actually he had actually been transferred to uh, United States Penitentiary Terre Haute in Terre Haute, Indiana. And that's where he took his, he sucked his last breath in. Yeah, yeah, because I don't think this, I don't. Th- I don't know if Colorado has a death penalty. Yeah, I don't, plus I don't know if, uh federal prisons do i'm not sure i mean he he should have been locked in a porta potty lit on fire and beaten to death that might have still been too good too good for him i don't disagree you know so you ready to move on to gangsters now that we've just talked about like one of the worst people that's ever existed in this country let's move on to the best let's get on to some gangsters because this is the fun shit i mean it wasn't fun (laughs) for everybody but you know me i like talking about gangsters i'm 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 i I love me some gangsters. You know, we kind of did a thing if with a was, guy. It, yeah. And we, t- we covered some, like, pretty fucking gnarly gangsters. And, uh... Listen. These are some more of them. <laughs> you know, we talked. He listened. He talked a little bit. Yeah. We listened a little he bit. He talked a lot and we listened. True. Yeah. Everybody learned something is the important part. Yes. And Mickey Featherstone still may not be as big of a piece of shit as everybody <laughs> thinks he is. Because, I mean... I will agree. Maybe not all bad. No. <laughs> Crazy, yes. All bad, no. No. No, I, w- I won't go that far. So, you might not... You probably won't recognize this first name. I probably won't... I, there's a strong possibility I won't recognize any of the names. You'll probably... You'll recognize a couple. Okay. All right. Um, the first guy we're going to talk about is Jeff Fort, who... Um, Jeff who? Jeff Fort. F-O-R-T. Okay, I thought you said four. I was like, wait a minute. Did he say four? Jeff four. Yeah, he's a guitar player for Rob Zombie. Ah. Like John Five, you know? Nice. John Five's younger brother. Yeah. Oh, Um, cool. So Jeff Fort actually formed a group called the Blackstone Rangers when he was... uh, (laughs) Dude, band name? Not quite. He was... uh, Shit. Early teens when he formed this group. It was basically a way for him and his friends to kind of band together so that they didn't get the shit kicked out of them on their way home from school by all these, like, other street gangs. Because okay. he grew up in okay. Chicago. Okay. Uh, he grew up in Chicago in the 50s and 60s, so it was pretty rough still. Okay. I mean, still is, but whatever. So Dif- Different rough. Right. But this group, actually, it came from a good place and kind of continued to a good place until a certain point where it kind of changes. Okay. Um, so, as the group continued to grow they became involved with like you know helping the community they you know if there was like a community community event they would go around and help people they you know you know doing like street fairs whatever they were they were you know and they got involved with like social activism so like i mean this wasn't really the civil rights movement completely but kind of like maybe the tail end of it but it was still going on and these guys were involved with that um Unfortunately, as it continued to grow and they kept gathering members, a few bad eggs would kind of end up in the group. And as these bad eggs are coming in, Fort is meeting them and kind of like, maybe maybe there are other ways for us to make money other than just by helping our community. Um, Being, so he gets influenced. Yeah, by some not great people. Okay. Um, so long story short, Jeff Fort ends up converting to Islam after his group has completely changed to selling drugs and so just many. just being shitheads, basically. So many do that. I know. It's kind of weird. So he would eventually be busted for conspiracy after taking a meeting with some Libyan gentlemen who may or may not have had the capability to get him some very, very large firearms and explosive devices, which he planned on using on the community that he had spent most of his life helping. What a dick. Uh, If I remember correctly from the episode of Gangland, I think there was a story of him trying to get a law, like a, you know, a rocket launcher, to fire into a police station somewhere. But he was transferred from another facility to ADX Florence in 2006 and has been there ever since. And this is kind of a weird part. He has a no human contact order. Which, for somebody like this, I don't really understand that. 
he wasn't like a serial killer. He wasn't some fucking psychopath that had, you know, killed and eaten a bunch of babies or something. Maybe there's just something you don't, we don't know about. I, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but I, I would encourage anybody that can find gangland. There's an episode where they, they, t- they cover, uh, four and the black pea stones, which is what the group eventually would become. Okay. Um, Gangland is one of the best fucking shows the History Channel ever made, hands down. Like, it just is. I own every season of it. It's awesome. Um, next guy we're going to talk about is going to be Nicodemo Little Nicky Scarfo. So, after the deaths of Angelo Bruno and Phil Testa, Scarfo would become the boss of the Lucchese crime family in Philadelphia. That one ring a bell? The Lucchese, they're kind of a big deal? Sounds familiar, yeah. So Scarfo was a uh, was very violent even from a young age. Um, when he was in his early twenties in nineteen sixty three, he ended up spending six months in prison for fatally stabbing a longshoresman. Obviously, we have connections because we're part of this crime family, so you're not going to be in there very long. We get you out. Okay. Yeah. So he kind of moves his works his way up the ranks. He becomes a capo and a captain, and ends up getting to a position where. When Phil Testa, quote unquote, was assassinated, that he took over as Don of the family. Oh, look. He, he, oh, 100- darn. I don't know how this happened. He just died. He 110,000% had Phil Testa killed. No, he didn't. No, no, yeah, man. No. Uh-uh. He wouldn't do that. He, he swallowed a bullet on his own. Yeah. <laughs> and then one of the other people that, he would eventually have killed was his childhood friend and some kind of like, almost like a mentor who came up with him. Like they were like, they were, they were very close. Um, and that guy's name would be Salvatore Testa, whose father he had had killed beforehand. Uh, so with all these people that Scarfo had been closely associated with, he'd been friends with, they start coming up dead and everybody else in the organization is kind of like they lose trust for him. Yeah. Uh, and after a failed extortion of a major developer in the area, like he was trying to extort this guy for somewhere in the area of like $8 million. They were developing a, a large like shopping center, kind of civic center kind of thing. Uh-huh. And uh, this fails. The guy ends up going to the police and the FBI start an investigation and they fucking hem his ass up. And, as he's on the stand being tried for all of this, every per- like almost every person that the defense called was a part of his organization. These disloyal associates were the ones that put him away. Uh, he would actually die of natural causes in 2017. Oh, darn. Yeah. Like that, I said, man, a lot of these guys could be their own episodes. Like That breaks my heart. Yeah. <laughs> breaks my poor little heart. <laughs> so we're gonna talk next. We're gonna talk about uh, Vincent Bassiano. Ah, Vincent Vincenzo. He may be Italian. No, <laughs> he's definitely Polish. <laughs> That's the most Irish fucking name I've ever heard. <laughs> ah, Vincenzo Vinny. So this guy's nickname was actually Gorgeous Vin- uh, Gorgeous Vinny, or Vinny Gorgeous, one of the two, yeah. because he owned a beauty parlor that was called Hello Gorgeous. That he used as a front. Hello, gorgeous. But this Hello, dude, time. but this dude was fucking immaculate. Whenever he was out in public, like everything about him was perfect. His hair was done perfect. His fucking nails were clean. He had like perfectly manicured nails, nice clothes. Not to sound like an asshole, stereotypical mafia guy. So uh, Bassiano became associated with organized crime at a very young age, like 12, 13 in that neck of the woods. No. Um, Started working for the mafia bosses, like, as a numbers runner, a paper boy, collecting stuff for him. Uh-huh. Um, in 1991, Bassiano became a made man in the Buonono crime family, which is another big one. Like, there's, like, five or six real big ones, and that's one of them. Never heard of them. Really? Oh, shit, they're, like, one of the, like, the big ones in New York, like, top five in New York, like, the Listen, real big ones. I know, like, one. Okay. You know, one one big one. We're going to talk about that one, I'm pretty sure, too. Or maybe uh, two, Okay. So later on in 2002, Bassiano was promoted to a captain. 
Uh-huh. In, in 1994, Bassiano was acquitted of supplying heroin to a drug ring that made approximately $10 million a year from 1985 to 1991. That's a lot of money, and that's a lot of heroin. What uh-huh. if it happened to, like, old-time fucking gangsters like Mickey Spillane and fucking, like, those guys where they, like, we're, we'll fucking kill people, we'll do this, we'll run rackets, we're not touching fucking drugs. We're not going to touch drugs, we're not going to touch prostitution. And then, like, the 80s, like, everybody was on coke, and they're like, hey, fucking cocaine's awesome, let's well, start selling this shit. It's because they they found a different avenue, because they realized that, hey... People want this shit. Want to? We're gonna buy this shit. They're dumb enough to do right. whatever. So, fuck it. We're gonna let's, let's sell it. You know. And they didn't think. You know, because I mean, most most you know gangs were well. There was liquor, you right. know, and and alcohol. You know, maybe cigarettes or something. You know, wasn't it wasn't anything like, or they were you know. But like the, these well, guys, bad. these guys bad. that came up in the '80s and '90s are the reason that a lot of like even like the '70s, '80s, and '90s are the reason that a lot of the old timers got fucking killed because they know that they're doing something that the old timers don't appreciate and would not want to do themselves. And these guys, like our old dogs that still have some pull, would way. have you killed because they're, you're breaking the rules. But they're also those those old dogs are in their way. Exactly. You know? So. Fuck them. We're going to off their ass. Make it look like an accident because we don't want the others to think that, oh, hey, you know, we we, we killed these guys because, you know, they don't want them to, to have that because uh, they don't want to get killed themselves. Right. So Bassiano would again get himself a promotion, this time in 2004, when Joseph Massiano, who was the who was the boss of the Bonono family was sent to prison and he told Bassiano, Hey, you're the boss. Now you do what needs to be done. This uh-huh. is you're you're the guy. So Bassiano starts bringing new guys in and he, some of these new guys, he's like, Hey, you want to become a made man? <laughs> you're going to do me a favor. Okay. You're going to kill, uh, Ra- uh <coughs> you're going to kill Rudolfo. I'm sorry, Rudolph. Pozzolio, who was another kind of one of the old timers, like doesn't really like what's going on with these new kids coming up. They're fucking everything up. They're going to get us caught. Okay. Yeah. So these guys start plotting the murders of Pozzolio and uh, Patrick DeFilippo, who was a capo and some other, other, you know, other high ranking guys that he wants to get rid of, but he can't just demote. Um, so Bassiano was actually convicted uh, for ordering the hit on Pozzolio. And uh, in June of 2011, a grand jury would prosecute him. And they actually requested this guy get the death penalty. Um, but instead, he was, you know, it was, it was lowered to life in prison, where he end, would end up in ADX Florence. So I saved our last two gangsters. I mean, it's probably it's for his... Well, I guess for him, the reason why he's there is for his own protection. Yes, just because this guy would have ended up headless in a trash can somewhere. Yeah, if he had gone to a normal prison, he would have been dead because they would have the the mafia. They've got of, guys on the inside. Yeah, Whether they be families. inmates or guards, they've got guys. Yeah, they would have killed. They had him killed for sure. So and they, and they would they would cross racial lines to do it. Too. Oh yeah, they don't give a fuck. They'd pay yeah. anybody to kill you. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. So. Our last two guys, I'm pretty sure everybody's heard of at some point in time. Okay. Joaquin Guzman Larea. Never heard of him. How about El Chapo? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Listen. Listen, senor. If you use his real fucking name, man. Well, we're not going to disrespect this guy because, you know, there's a very good potential that we could be killed for talking about him. <laughs> so, yes. So the now, I guess, former leader of the Sinaloa drug cartel. Uh-huh. Uh, El Chapo was a bad bad guy yeah um he's been knee deep in the mexican drug cartel wars since the late 80s when he was a teenager he's responsible for the deaths of men and women on both sides of the u.s mexican border uh he's had somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 to 3,000 people executed by his direct order 
No. Yeah, dude. Like, not stop a man, not it. a man to be fucking trifled with or truffled with. Oh, stop it! Listen, they they fell on a bullet or something by themselves. No, they had their fucking faces sewn to soccer balls. But I have a feeling. Yeah. I have a feeling though. He didn't fuck. There's one group he didn't fuck with. Who? MS13. Who gives a fuck about them? He would have fucking had those guys destroyed if he wanted to. No. But they didn't fuck with each other, so they didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying that's. I think that's the one group that he didn't fuck with. The, the 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 drug cartels in Mexico own everything. They own the government. They own the police. I don't think they'd be worried about MS13. I don't. They know. would have fucking wiped their asses with them. They would have thought they were just a bunch of punk kids, and they would have fucked them up. I don't know, man. Because I think I think MS13's a pretty fucking big deal. Yeah, you've got numbers, but these a guys Latin, have a big big Latin deal. I mean, they're like they they've spread. You know, they've because they, they're into Mexico. Right. And... No, that's that's fine. Like MS-13 has numbers, but these guys have the equipment and the training. Just about everybody that's ever been in like the Mexican drug cartels at some point in time was in the Mexican military. Like either military or police. Like these guys are no fucking joke. True. I mean, well, kind of like the same with uh, the Colombian. Yeah. Car- drug cartel. Right. They're the same thing. Yeah. yeah. The most impressive thing about El Chapo is not the amount of people that he's had killed or the amount of really? you know, poundage of drugs and shit that he's had moved across uh-huh. the world. The most impressive thing is his escape record. Okay. So, his first escape was in 2001 when he bribed guards that were extraditing him from San Diego back to Mexico. So, this these guards had him in a vehicle. They crossed the border into Mexico with him. Okay. Where the guards that took him in Mexico from the U.S. guards were already on the payroll. So they basically drove out of sight and were like, hey, where you want to go? And dropped him off. <laughs> His second escape is actually... Uh, th- this is some Shawshank Redemption shit right here. All right. In 2014, he was being held at a maximum facility. Uh, he was being held at a maximum... Sc- <laughs> He was being held at a maximum security facility in Juarez, Mexico. His cell was under 24-hour audio and video surveillance. The only part of his cell that wasn't under surveillance was his shower. For privacy reasons, obviously, you know. You, gotta, you give him a little bit of privacy so he can shower. But you shouldn't really have. No. So the guards that are monitoring his cell go over, you know, they watch him go over to the shower you know, they see his clothes get, you know, up from off screen, like set, whatever, on the floor. And after about 20 minutes, they realize he's not coming back. Maybe he's taking a long shower, but I'm assuming they have those shutoff valves like we talked about with this one. Uh, I highly doubt it, though. <laughs> but after 20 minutes, they're like, we should go check. They go into his cell. He's gone. There's not a fucking trace of him. Like, he just vanished. Escape from Alcatraz? Later on, they would find built into his shower was a tunnel that his boys had dug. Escape from Alcatraz. They dug this tunnel from a house further back in town. They dug a fucking mile underground, under the prison, up into his cell, and built a ladder for him to come down and go out through the tunnel and gone. No shit. Yep. So he would actually go on the run for two fucking years. And after the manhunt and a pretty severe shootout, he got caught again. And this time he was extradited back to the U.S. And he is either in the process of or currently incarcerated at ADX Florence. So if his guys are thinking about busting him out... Good fucking luck. They've got about 650 miles, 615 miles of tunneling to do. And to be completely honest, I would not be shocked if they've already started digging. Good <laughs> luck, motherfucker. Like, these fucking dudes brought in, like, construction equipment into the house. Like, they brought, like, small, like, hand excavators and shit like that. They had a fucking railroad system for all the dirt and stuff, like Indiana Jones style, to be shipped back from under the prison. Yes, but if his ass is on the top floor... You're not tunneling to it. No, but if they come in there and they fucking get up in there and you've got a bunch of heavily armed, heavily trained motherfuckers with prison guards, some shit's going to happen. Well, yeah. Like I said, everybody in this fucking 
Lucky in this Luciano building. Luciano there is going to get fucking let out, and they're going to cap their asses. Everybody in this fucking building. This should be a goddamn movie or a book series where it's like, hey, so shit happened, and all of these fucking villains got let loose. <laughs> I mean, it's it's fucking who wild. Who kills who first? Honestly, I think at that point in time, you're like, fuck this, let's get out. And then you get out, and you're like, I don't even remember who you are, see you bye, and you just go your separate ways. And fucking chaos ensues. No, I guarantee somebody's killing somebody. I don't know. I, I, I just have this gut feeling. Tells well, I mean, me bad guys are going to kill guards. <laughs> That's where I would land yes, on that. Yes, but some of these psychotic motherfuckers are going to kill each other because they oh, haven't yeah. done it in a while. You know, I mean, like these Mexican dudes, they start busting out like Aryan Brotherhood members. Those motherfuckers are going to get smoked because they're like, <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. I helped you and you don't like me because I'm brown. Uh, fuck you. Once you get back in there and I'm going to like empty half a magazine into the back of your skull and see what Probably, happens. yeah. So, honestly, in my opinion, the biggest name gangster that has ever spent time here, Sammy the Bull Gravano. Mm. So, he was, uh, he started off like low-level member of the Colombo crime family. And later, he would go and start working for the Gambinos. You've heard of that one. Yes, I've heard of the Gambinos. <laughs> Gravano I- participated in conspiracy to murder... Gambino boss Paul Castellano. Uh huh. Pretty sure we've talked about the Gambinos already. Yes. Yes. Well, if we haven't, Justin Rimmel. I'm has. pretty sure Justin. I'm not sure if it's a Patreon episode or a regular one, but I know he's covered Sammy the Bull Gravano. Yeah. And if it's Patreon, I will spend the fucking money to go listen to it. He, he has he has covered it because he talked about him a little bit on the podcast, but I think he also covered him because he, he talked. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So Gravano would actually play a very, very pivotal role in the planning and executing of Castellano's murder. Uh, other conspirators included, you know, some other guys, you know, Frank DeSerio, Joseph Armone, Angelo Ruggiero, and this guy named John Gotti. Anybody ever heard of him? Whatever. No, He's probably no big cool. deal. Never heard of him. So after Castellano's death, Gotti elevated Gravano to consigliere. So, uh-huh. so Gotti becomes the boss. Yes. And Gravano is his right hand. Yep. Anything he needs done goes through Gravano and then down the chain from there. Yes. Uh, So he would actually hold this up until 1990 when he became underboss, which is even higher up. This is where you start thinking, maybe John's not as untouchable as he thinks he is. Maybe I can kill him and take his spot. But... Well, I mean, consigliere is actually, I think, is actually higher than underboss because consigliere, you're basically his right hand man. Right. But underboss is like your vice president, essentially. Yeah, um, yeah okay. I, I don't really know the whole, but sure. But Gotti didn't earn his nickname the Teflon Don for nothing. So at the time, Gravano was the highest ranking member of the mafia to break the oath of La Cosa Nostra and cooperate with the government. He starts giving testimony. Um, and as he's testifying, that's given other guys the, the courage to go. Okay. If Sammy's going to do this and not get touched, I can step forward too, And I can, I can get myself and my family potentially out of, out of problems, out of the way into witness protection where we're not going to get fucking, you know, stood against a wall and shot somewhere. Mm hmm. So he's responsible for, a, as as much as he did to help take down the mafia in New York, because he's actually the man that led to the takedown of John Gotti, like, directly. So as much as he did to help the government... Well, he, he, God, <laughs> Gotti never got got. Yes, he, he did. Well, he got got dead. He got <laughs> he went to jail. For a little bit, right. then, then, he, then <laughs> now he... Well, we don't know where he is. But for <laughs> as much as he did to help take him down he's still responsible for a bare minimum of 19 murders um it's only 19 so unlike any other guy on this list that we just talked about gravano was released from adx in 2017 uh he's actually this is really fucking weird he's actually slated to be part of an mtv reality show with his daughter karina seabrook and he's right around 75 years old at this point in time Hey. You know, 
It's like, you don't see fucking Jimmy Coonan getting let out of prison anytime soon because he was a straight-up fucking psychopath. No. He would have kept doing his shit and killing people for as long as he could. Gravano was kind of like, eh. <laughs> I think I've lost my upward mobility in this organization, yeah. so fuck everybody. I'm taking you all down with me. <laughs> um, I do have a few dishonorable mentions Ooh. because there's no honor in these pieces of shit either. Okay. Um Charles Harrelson. That last name sounds familiar, I'm sure. He's the father of fucking Woody Harrelson. Yeah. He was convicted of assassinating a federal judge by the name of John Wood. And there is some potential evidence that connects him to the JFK assassination. <laughs> Which would be another fucking rabbit hole to go down that I don't have time for right now. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, moth, mafia. Ma- you know, maybe, maybe. Who knows? Um, maybe some government. Too. We're going to jump back to our... Our buddy Robert Hansen, who's American piece of shit for doing shit to Americans. How about John Walker Lynn? You remember that one? Yeah. Yeah. He was a California man that converted to Islam as a youth and would make multiple trips back and forth across the the world to the Middle East and learn some shit here and there. And then in 2000, he actually went and joined Al Qaeda. And him and his boys got pinned down. They surrendered and the Afghani army that captured him was like, Hey, this dude looks like one of you. You want him? (laughs) And we're like, yeah, sure. We're going to fuck this guy up. We're going to ruin his day. And he's serving a life sentence in ADX, super uh, ADX Florence. Again, probably should have just been fucking killed and left in the desert for the coyotes, but whatever. Uh, Larry Hoover, another guy that if you watch gangland, you'll find, uh, he was the founder of the gangster disciples, which is a Chicago street gang. Uh huh. Um, OG Mac, who is the founder of the United Blood Nation. Probably heard of the Bloods here and there, I'm guessing. No, never. No? Okay. Uh uh-uh. uh. Just the Crips. <laughs> <laughs> A dude by the name of Matt Hale, who deemed himself Pontifex Maximus, or Supreme Leader of a racist neo Nazi group formed, uh, formerly known as the World Church of the Creator. Uh, this was a white supremacist organi- organization based in East Peoria, Illinois. Another fucking winner. Hmm. Um, and this guy is probably the person that makes me the absolutely phys- most physically sick to uh, actually look into anything of. Uh, Joseph E. Duncan III. He was a serial killer and child molester. Uh, most well known for the abduction of Sasha and Dylan Grohn in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. He abducted these children after he killed the rest of their family. Uh, he would then kind of take them cross country, like to California, up into Washington. He had these these kids for a few months. Uh, um, Sasha would be recovered by the police alive after a fucking absolute saint of a Denny's waitress noticed him and noticed the girl and was like, "These people look familiar. I'm calling the cops." Uh, Dylan was not so lucky. He had actually been killed with a 12 gauge shotgun just days before. Uh, Dylan was nine years old when this piece of shit killed him. So if anybody is listening to this, they can get a hang of this guy, do the world a favor and fuck him to death with whatever you can. Please. And thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's our, (laughs) our all-star, all-star list of scumbags from ADX Florence in Colorado. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind doing some more of these goddamn prisons. Like, Terre Haute's got some pretty bad motherfuckers in it, too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could just do the history of fucking San Quentin. <laughs> you know? Why the hell not? I mean, that would give us a good reason to watch a Johnny Cash concert, or at least listen to him. Well, that's fulsome. I Either or, because he went to San Quentin, too. Uh, did he? I don't he did. He wrote a song called San Quentin. I know he went to... San Quentin, I hate every inch of you. <laughs> okay, yeah. I knew he went to Folsom twice. Oh, yeah, he went to Folsom, he went to San Quentin. Uh, he may have done a couple others. He may uh, have done time in a couple others, too. But well, he, Johnny Cash was a fucking gangster. A little bit of time. Not um, too much. But, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to come back and do this again. Yeah. Um, it's it's, uh, it's kind of interesting what you find out. You yeah. Know, and, I mean, uh, like I said, I, ch- I would... I would challenge anybody, even if the El Chapo there, you know, if, if he feel if his boys feel You're froggy, froggy. <laughs> you know, I guarantee you're not going to fucking survive it. 
You know, because th there's no fucking way you're going to break that guy out of prison. Yeah, because we've got the fucking dismemberment laser system in the hallways. Exactly. Robot dogs. Robot dogs. Fucking, you Remote know, controlled guards. Pressure plates. Yeah, pressure cookers. Exactly. Well, we should keep those away from that one guy. Well, but, I mean. You know. He knows what he's doing, but, you yeah. know. <laughs> he can't talk about it anymore because he. I think he tried to kill himself at one point in time and fucked up his larynx and he can't talk anymore, but. Oh, well, that's a sad fucking sign story. Language. Yeah. Fuck it. You know? We can at least let him out. Like, like listen, we're going to put a shot collar on your ass or, or, or something I'm gonna else. We're going to put a shotgun belt around your neck and be like, listen, if you move wrong, I'm going to hit this button and we're going to blow your teeth into a different county. <laughs> exactly. But still. Fucking saw style. Do your work, you know, do your thing, you know. So, pro tip, if you're not a piece of shit, you won't end up here. Or you're a piece of shit that, you know. you. Don't... Or if you're a piece of shit and you're good enough at it, you'll get away with it. Or you were a piece of shit you've done fucked up and, well, you could possibly end up being dead if you go to a real prison. I would probably end up, end up rather up be there. dead than go here, realistically. I mean... I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I'd i rather be alive. Eh. But What's not, the point? But, but not in a real prison where there's a possibility... Oh, no, I don't want to go to real jail. I want to go to Supermax. Like, yeah. real jail, you're going to get, like, stuff's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Things. Shower stuff. Cafeteria stuff. Well, I mean... Uh, somebody paying a guard to leave your cell open stuff. Well, yeah, because there's a difference between Max yeah. and Super Max. Getting stabbed with the fucking sharpened toothbrush stuff. Because, what, uh, uh, Comstock is a Max. Yeah, Comstock's Max, but it's not Super Max. No, 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 this isn't like... Because they've got Comstock, which is a maximum security, fifth, <laughs> maximum security prison, and then they've got the daycare center, Kitty Corner, across the yeah. street, which is like the, like the Warren County Jail or something, where, like fucking you get busted and end up the drunk tank that's where you go yeah and you kind of look across the window and go yeah if i keep fucking up that's where i'm gonna go yeah you don't i mean and there's some fucking gross people in comstock and that's fucking 45 minutes from us yeah we already covered one yeah yeah i mean that's that's yeah Shit, we could we don't do fucking new york like maximum security prisons we could do danamora we could fucking do that one there's a lot of prisons to cover and a lot of fucking nasty people in those prisons. Yeah. So, a, lot, a lot of weird shit. Yeah. So. But anyway. Was that sad? Yeah. Go over to studio.com. Yeah. Check out their headphones, earbuds, Bluetooth speaker. Yep. And put them in your basket. Go to checkout. Find the little coupon section. Put in the promo code of DarkWindows15 in to get 15% off your entire purchase. But if you also... But if you, Happen to forget, hey, what what the hell is that place? Go over to... DarkWindowsPod.com <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, I'll, I'll do that again. Go to DarkWindowsPod.com. We have links to fucking everything there. We got links to our buddies at Studio Sweden. We've got links to our Patreon, which you should check out because we actually just put up another episode. We've got links to our Threadless shop where you can go buy some t-shirts and potentially going to have some new designs up there soon. Knock on wood. You can go to... You have a we have links to our Age of Radio page where you can go back and listen to everything we've ever recorded because if you're listening on Apple, they've already started deleting our shit because we're and, being censored. No, it's actually because we have, we're over 100 episodes. And, and hold on, but, but Age of Radio stuff, there is some things on there that you can get discounts on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, such as uh, if you want want a blue mic, you know, Yeti mic. Yeah, they've could, got stuff could, like on it and yeah. CBS All Access. There's all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can get discounts on yep. that's on there as well. And it's also got links to our Instagram and Twitter mm -hmm. and our Facebook. So come check us out. Yeah. We do this every fucking week, believe it or not. We do. Yes. So with that being said, just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean that the dark can't see into you. Insert prison door slamming sound here. Bam! No. <laughs> No, not really. I'm going to do that. I'm going to find <laughs> and be like, pink. 